They robbed a sperm clinic, just to let you know. Um, so, shout out to yeah. a guy I've seen for five weeks in a row do this, has bought in no matter if the targets come his way or not. Jimmy Graham, out in space, has figured out how to freaking block, folks. And it's beautiful. Holy shit. Five weeks in a row. I've, I've, well, I've kept count now. And this guy has, on the, on the Aaron Jones screenplay, he pancaked Anthony Hitchens. I, I've never seen this side of Graham these, before this five weeks. It's always looked like he was a little bit hesitant and he didn't want the contact. And now it seems like the, with the quote he had the other day saying, no, I'm just going to let the targets come to me. I'm not, I don't care about my stats. Last year he said, all oh, my stats sucked. It's a completely different Jimmy Graham. We've seen these past five weeks. I'm not saying he's a superstar again, but those little things like Ryan said, the details, the, the fact he's out run blocking and the fact he's out blocking in space for, for receivers and running backs catching the passes is beautiful. And I, oh. I just want to say this. I want to jump in here quickly because of a bunch of the stuff Ryan said. It goes back to all the points we told you about. Told you about it all off season. We told you about it after the draft. We told you about it in the preseason. We tell you about it in preview shows. Look, it's not. That's what a Vikings fan looks like. And that is an old ass man on screen. <laughs> that makes me look young and spry for real. Man. Don't get even that cocky yet. <laughs> like, I had to start wearing a hat because my hair is a freaking distraction to Dave on this goddamn podcast. I swear to God. So, it for looks sure. like I'm talking to Fonzarelli. <laughs> Hey, go ahead right, because go. I'm beautiful, all right? But, no, the points, uh, we told you. We told you. And the biggest thing that I love tonight, my biggest number one thing that made me smile from ear to ear the way you have this whole time, Ryan, is Aaron Jones and Williams on the field at the same time. Hell Just like yeah. I told you. Utilization of the personnel. Like, there's a lot of good players on this team, and you've got to figure out how to get as many of them on the field as you can at the same time, i.e. the Patriots. It's what I pounded the table about. This is what the Patriot way truly is. It's not about Bill Belichick, and he's not answering questions, and all this Billy bullshit that all these other coaches that came from that play. You've heard it now. If you if you listened to them talk about Kyle Shanahan and and Solace over the week on NFL Network. They've talked about how <clears throat> Kittle was on Good Morning Football, said, never in my career have I ever played for a coach that says, we're only going to formulate a game plan based on the team we're playing this week. Our playbook can be 700 plays, but we're going to choose a certain amount of plays that we know are going to what we feel attack their weakness and put our players in the best positions to win us the game. Screw what we did last week. Well, guess what? We've already heard our 39 year old head coach that everybody said was over his skis and couldn't get along. And our 36 year old quarterback who's never worn a wristband ever in his career, wearing a wristband out there doing things that they were told all season by the pundits. They weren't going to be able to do. Okay. And, LaFleur is doing the same thing. He is slowly as they get more comfortable. Like, this is essentially for you you non-diehards out there. What LaFleur is right now, he's essentially a rookie quarterback, right? Seeing defenses attack him for the first time. And so each week, he's learning more and more how defenses want to attack him and what he can be successful at doing, and he's formulating a Rolodex. The only difference is, and what my caveat, and Dave, you're gonna, you can jump in on this, what I told you the difference was going to be, and what everybody was trying to make into a negative, what I pounded the table, was Aaron Rodgers and his ability to bail his coach out and give his coach a breather. And I think we've seen it week after week, and if you didn't see it tonight, you're fucking blind. That coach was having a hard time tonight, and his quarterback yeah. gave him some time to adjust, 
kept them in the game, even though there was some sacks and some things that weren't pretty, and I know it was frustrating. That 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 spread offense that was going on for a couple drives is not Lafleur. That's Lafleur going. I need a minute. Go out there, Rodgers, and Rod. Okay, this is my Rolodex. When you start seeing the motions come back, when they came back and scored touchdowns in the third and fourth quarter, with the that became Lafleur again. It happened exactly the way I'm fucking told you it would, people. There's one word that we've all talked about, guys, with Lafleur: adaptability. Yep. He adapted to the defense, what was showing him. And guess what? They want to blitz all out every time? Cool. We'll throw it to Aaron Jones in the flats. We'll throw it to to uh, Kumaro uh, with Rodgers falling down. Get We we adapted. That's what it was. The All the coordinators, the coaches, the Packers adapted tonight. And it showed. It, there was no question about it. What LaFleur has mentioned multiple times when it comes to his quarterback in this offense, talking about Aaron Rodgers, is that this offensive like game plan and scheme hasn't seen a quarterback run it like Aaron Rodgers. That play, that touchdown to Jamal Williams. Jesus. The, that Probably was one of the unreal. best I've ever seen. Real. That was unreal. That's off schedule. That's not planned. That's not the play call. But that's what a talented once of a lifetime generational type quarterback he makes that kind of flick of the wrist that's unreal (laughs) just drop it in the bucket in the corner to a running back like jamal went like literally he'd have to do shit it was right there Mm -hmm. those aren't the type of plays that you know the Shanahan's and McVeigh's and everybody draws up because most of the time the quarterbacks in those offenses cannot do that kind of play. That's that, what Dave and I said. That's why. That's why. That's why the Falcons lost the Super Bowl. That's why the Rams last year lost the Super Bowl. You put Aaron Rodgers on both of those teams in those situations. He's got two more rings. That's yep. what Dave and I's no. point was. This I is the the floor this, has Rogers in his back pocket and it showed tonight more than ever. The point I made, and then Dave immediately was backing me on and has the entire time. And Ryan, when you heard it, you have too. Is is the last time a quarterback that is first ballot Hall of Fame while he's still playing, with arguably all the requisite tools to even be entered into the goat conversation to be in this offense, won back-to-back Super Bowls. All the other quarterbacks that have played in it and have been successful, they're good or really good, but they ain't those two. And you're seeing the difference it makes, even in a rookie head coach that has no, very little play-calling experience. Let's be real. LaFleur has one-year play-calling experience. One year. No, one no year. head coaching experience. So he needs Aaron Rodgers to give him the breast like you saw those two drives when that zero blitz scheme and his communication was giving issues to his offense. He got a two-drive breather to not really have to worry about the play calling to figure out what to do and then also the halftime break going forward. And you saw what he did with it. You got to commend him. It ain't pretty all the time. But you got to – Belichick don't win pretty all the time, and neither is Brady. But they win, don't they? That's what this is about, winning. Rod, Rogers was, was just at the podium, and it, it literally backs what we've been saying. Rogers said, word for word, winning is a cure-all, but it's fun when you're winning with the right people. We're doing it the right way, and we're really enjoying the people we go to work with. It just – He's happy. He's having fun. He loves who he's working with. What? What? And you're winning. What else do you need? I love you know, it. Hey, sometimes, love it. sometimes having fun breeds winning, and not just the other way around. Have, and you know, I don't think that point brings uh, is brought up enough. Like sometimes the fact that because they were having fun in the off season when games didn't matter. Okay. And we brought that point up, too, when we were asked about what we thought the difference in what we had saw in the offseason 
when I was on the Full Monty Football Show the first time. That was a question. That was a point I brought up. You saw guys coaching, players coaching players. Bakhtiar taking light. Uh, Z Dog. By the way, huge, huge care. job from him coming in tonight. Light and was playing awesome. Both sides. That's like trying and to succeeded. wipe your ass with two different hands on the same shit. <laughs> 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 now that's called dexterity right there, folks. Oh, yeah. that's that one got Ryan. <laughs> that, that got Ryan's Ryan. lung just deflated. He awesome. needs another shot. Yeah. Someone get him a shot. Not that like was you. awesome. <laughs> that was amazing. Well, well Ryan that's, gets his that threat. is drop worthy right there. I'm bringing that one back. Have y'all man. seen the stats combined for the past two weeks for Rodgers? 48 out of 64, 734 yards, eight touchdowns, and 152.0 rating. That's his last two game stats, fellas. I don't think Ryan's recovered yet, man. He's still dying. All those sperm samples are about to come up. Dave, we're killing him here, guys. We're killing him. You guys are killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh. Oh. Kay's right. back. Breathe. All right, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so, obviously, obviously, we won the game. And, again, we're not going to be on here nitpicking, but there's always going to be notes that we have that we make during the game, and I got to bring them up because if I don't bring them up, I always feel bad during the next week when <laughs> – Everyone starts talking about the same shit that I'm like, that was in my notes. I didn't bring it up on the podcast. So I'm going to bring it up. All right. So first and foremost, a couple things. One, I think that as the Packers organization, this has been a thing that I've seen over the years. We don't put enough emphasis on the whoever's role it is that is in the ear that watches replay that says, hey, you need to quick snap this because I don't think we actually caught that ball or or whatever it is. Or, hey, you need to challenge this because I don't think that was actually legit. Whoever that person's role is, they need to, they need to seriously find somebody and pay them a lot more money than what they're currently being paid and actually put a lot more emphasis in that because I think that's an overlooked role throughout the entire NFL – like tonight, it worked out in our favor. However, I think that getting the snap off quicker before they're able to challenge something is such an integral part. It's a, it's the details. I keep saying details matter. Yeah. Right? Details matter. And I feel like that's something that we lack on and we have for years. And I feel like that's something that throughout the entire NFL that a lot of teams lack. And I feel like what, what is it going to take to just pay somebody a little bit extra more money or whatever to just watch the shit? Like the same feed that we see live on TV at home where we're all like yelling, like challenge that or, hey, quick snap the fucking ball because that clearly wasn't or a two delay games, favor, too. Right. Like, I just feel like that is such an overlooked part of the game. And again, we're just going to talk about the things because. At the end of the day, we won the game, and I'm super excited, and I'm ecstatic. No, it's it's but like it's our version. You have okay. to nitpick. It's our version of the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, it's like yeah. it's like it's like the extravagant, the the mundane, and the terrible. All right, like, yeah. and that's it's just kind of one of those mundane things. It's not a terrible thing, but it's just one of those small things that you're like, and and honestly, Ryan, I think. Maybe year two or later in the season, like come playoff time, maybe that I just think that with a rookie head coach with all the shit on his plate already having to adjust to, like I just talked about, being only in his second year calling plays, first year being a head coach, I think that's something that we're going to see work out. Those are some of the small things that I think will work out over time. Of course, this season and going in through into next season when he has an off season of everything else, but it is a good point because it does drive you nuts. One it drives things, me nuts. It does. One of the things I want to say that drove me nuts tonight right away was the, the slowness on getting into the play so that they could do like they had been the last couple of weeks 
uh, of actually like there, there's nothing there was like a, arrowhead noise, dude. That's one thing I think. How many really delay of game? That's what I'm saying. Penalty. In a couple of time, Two. in a couple of timeouts, were blown.